Good afternoon. My name is Christian Freund. I'm co-heading the IPS core facility at Leiden University Medical Center here in the Netherlands. And I would like to thank Thermo Fisher Scientific for giving us the opportunity to talk during this 24 hour of stem cells in 2017. I would like to present you our recently published work, which is the comparison of the teratoma in vivo assay and in vitro surrogate tests, such as pluritest and scorecard for assessment of pluripotency of human pluripotent stem cells. As you all know, human pluripotent stem cells can self-renew and they can differentiate into derivatives of all three germ layers, so they are very nice tools for disease modeling, for drug testing, toxicology testing, but they also hold great promise to go into human therapy. However, there is variability between lines in terms of differentiation capacity, and it is thought that this is linked to the genetic background, to the somatic origin of which the iPS cells have been derived. In female lines, the X chromosome status is important, the reprogramming method, and so there are various factors in influencing the differentiation potential. So there has been an ongoing discussion of how to best assess differentiation capacity of lines. So the original assay is the teratoma assay, but it's not standardized, so there has been a call to standardize it. Others have questions, questioned whether the teratoma assay is actually still useful. So there have been in vitro assays proposed to replace it, such as the pluritest or the human pluripotent stem cell scorecard assay. Also, the International Stem Cell Forum had, has the goal to establish a consensus of robust protocols to assess the capacity of differentiation of human pluripotent stem cells. So here you have a short overview of the different assays we have been using in our work, the teratoma assay on the left, where undifferentiated cells are injected into mice under the skin and then the, the benign tumors form and they ideally contain derivatives of all three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. However, the assay is animal dependent. There's no standardization, as I already said, so numbers of cells and injection sites are differ, differ from lab to lab. It is time consuming and expensive. You need a certified pathologist to analyze the data and it is non-quantitative. So this latter issue has been addressed recently by development of the Teratoscore, score, which is a quantitative analysis of teratomas by microarray. Then in the middle we have the scorecard, the in vitro assay, so it's based on in vitro differentiations, which are analyzed by real-time qPCR, and the analysis is based on 94 selected genes, including self-renewal genes and genes representing the three germ layers. And then we have pluritest on the right, which analyzes undifferentiated cells, again by microarray, and compares them to a reference database containing validated pluripotent stem cell lines as well as differentiated uh, cells. So in our work, we have been using different cell lines to challenge those assays. One is the H9 human embryonic stem cell line as a standard line. We then used an H9 hybrid line, which was generated by fusing H9 cells with human hematopoietic stem cells, and this line has a report of mesendodermal differentiation bias. We then used an embryonal carcinoma cell line, which expresses pluripotency markers, but is differentiation defective, so it's considered nullipotent. And then finally, we used an in-house generated human IPS cell line, which was generated with dox-inducible transgenes, so that line grows completely fine without doxycycline, but we can reactivate the transgenes by addition of doxycycline, and then we would expect to, it to be differentiation defective. So you can see here the abbreviations in bold of all those lines, H9, H9 hybrid, and so on. All lines were cultured on vitronectin and T38, except for the embryonal carcinoma line. We also assessed the quality of the cells before starting the different assays, only cells which had, or only populations which had more than 85% of OC3, 4 expressing cells were used for the different assays. So just a few details about the LUMC07 line, so the one which was generated with the dox-inducible 
lentivirus, you can see the lentivirus construct here, the four Yamanaka factors, which are separated by two A peptides. And then if we add doxycycline, you can see on the left that the transgenes are turned on. This is assessed by qPCR. And on the right, you can see that cells treated with doxycycline ex express 2A peptides in red. And they also have increased levels of SOX2. This is a mosaic phenomenon. So not all cells are activated, but at least part of them and at different levels. But not only the transgenes are turned on by doxycycline, but also we find increased expression of endogenous NANOC. Again, on the left, the qPCR, and then on the right, you can see in green that dox-induced cells have higher levels of NANOC. Now, the first assay we performed was the teratoma assay, so this is just the experimental setup. So we injected one million of cells together with Martigel subcutaneously into mice. In case of dox addition, the cells were pre-treated with dox, and then also the mice received doxycycline in the drinking water. We harvested the teratomas after about two to three months, once they reached a size of about two Q centimeter. And then we analyzed them by immunofluorescent staining, representing uh, the three germ layers. You can see AFP representing endoderm, beta-3 tubulin, ectoderm, and CD31 mesoderm. Basically, on the very left, the LUMC without dox, and then the group on the right, the H9, H9 plus dox and H9 hybrids, they all formed fully differentiated teratomas uh, containing derivatives of all three germ layers. In the middle, you can see the ECs, which are completely lacking differentiated cells, and very similar to that, also the LUMC plus dox teratomas only contained a few scattered cells expressing AFP and CD31, but no beta-3 tubulin. We then ask, are, this, are there still cells expressing pluripotency markers? And you can see that here, the fully differentiated teratomas on the right or on the very left, they are lacking undifferentiated cells, whereas the ECs and the LMC plus dox teratoma still contained high numbers of cells expressing OC3,4 in green and NANOC in red. We then analyzed uh, teratomas by microarray. So this data is based, the clustering is based on global genes. And you can see basically that two groups emerged, the differentiated teratomas on the left, and then the second group on the right containing the undifferentiated ECs and the LMC plus dox teratomas. We then analyzed the teratomas with a teratoscore score algorithm, and you can see there is a, the territory score is basically uh, divided. Everything above 100 is considered a normal teratoma. Between 150, you get a borderline tumor, and then everything below 50 is considered as a tissue-specific tumor. Now, if we start on the very left, the LMC uh, teratomas without doxycycline, they basically represented normal teratomas with differentiated cells. For the other lines, such as H9, H9 hybrid, and H9 plus dox, the results are more variable. So some teratomas did score as normal teratomas, whereas others were borderline or below borderline. Then you can see, again, the EC tumor as a triangle in the middle. And this tumor had a very low teratoscore score, as expected. Also, two teratomas of the LMC plus dox cells had very low scores, but there was one tumor which actually scored similar to the ones without doxycycline. So the gene list, which the territory score takes into account, does not contain self renewal genes. So we looked actually at these three tumors, which are shown on the left. So the ones without dox and this number two with dox. And as you can see within the qPCR results, that the uh, LMC07 tumors without doxycycline don't have any transgenes or endogenous NANOC, whereas the plus dox tumors do have those genes still on. And the one which scores similar to the one without dox actually has lower levels of transgene and NANOC. So it is partially undifferentiated still, but it cannot be identified by the territory score because there's a lack of self renewal genes. 
We then looked at human histochemistry, immunohistochemistry stainings of the tum tumors, and you can see in the upper row and in the second row on the very left the differentiated teratomas containing derivatives for all three germ layers, such as cartilage, uh, gut epithelium, and, and pigmented epithelium. However, in the second row on the right and in the middle, you can see the IMC plus stocks and the EC tumors, and these are very similar to each other in that they contain undifferentiated cells, as we already saw in the immunofluorescent staining, and they have a malignant phenotype. And we, con we confirmed this malignancy by showing that these tumors, the LMC plus docs and the ECs, are actually also expressing C CD30, whereas the differentiated tumors were lacking that marker. We then moved on to the in vitro differentiation, which was analyzed by the scorecard assay. So this is just an overview of the experimental setup of the in vitro differentiations for endoderm ectoderm in the middle and mesoderm. These are all commercially available kits. They are either monolayer differentiations for endoderm and mesoderm, or they have a first phase of spinny bees, and which are then plated down. So that's the case for the ectoderm. It's all quite short differentiation, so ranging from five to nine days. So here you can see the scorecard results. Uh, you get uh, the different scores, but I would like you to focus on the summary, which is shown here in yellow. So we have uh, on the very left the self renewal markers in green, and you can see that the LMC plus cells, the H9, H9 plus docs, and H9 hybrid, they all downregulate the self renewal markers, and they upregulated the endodermal markers, so they did dif differentiate into endoderm, as you can see with a purple plus on the right. However, the LMC plus docs and the ECs, they maintain self-renewal markers and they were unable to differentiate. So that's a bit what we already saw in the teratoma, so the LMC plus doc cells are unable to differentiate efficiently. We then, then also checked this in ectoderm differentiation, and again, the LMC without doxycycline and the H9 could efficiently differentiate, whereas the LMC plus doc cells maintained self renewal markers and were unable to differentiate. For the mesoderm, it looks slightly different. So in both cases, LMC plus docs and LMC without docs uh, downregulate self renewal markers and um, upregulated mesodermal markers. But when you look at the, actually at the scores, you can see that the upregulation of mesodermal markers was less efficient or it was significantly reduced in the LMC plus dox cells. We then moved on to the pluritest. So in this case, undifferentiated cells are analyzed by microarray. So we used plus dox cells or minus dox cells. So cells were incubated with doxycycline for three days. And we then did the microarray analyzed with a pluritest algorithm, which contains the database of 260 human pluripotent stem cell lines and also somatic tissues. What you then get is a pluripotency score on the y-axis and the novelty score on the x-axis, and lines which score higher than 20 for, no for pluripotency and lower than 1.67 for novelty are considered normal pluripotent stem cell lines. So here are the results of our cell lines. You can see that only the ECs were actually uh, flagged as distinct. You can see the yellow, uh, cell, the, the, the yellow dots representing the ECs, so they have a lower pluripotency score and um, a high and elevated novelty score, so they are really distinct from all the other cells. So there, there was no distinction between LMC07 and LMC plus doc cells, although they have a um, clear difference in differentiation potential. And you can see that also here in, with the scores. So in red, you have the pluripotency scores for the LMC plus doc cells, and above that, you have, then have the same score for the LMC cells without doxycycline, so there's basically no difference. Now, why is it that um, that the plus doc cells cannot be distinguished by pluritest. One reason is 
that the, we use murine transgenes for reprogramming. So these murine transgenes are not picked up by the microarray. And the second reason is that actually the ECs, when we look at differentially expressed genes, there's a much higher number in the ECs than in the plastoc cell. So we find about 5,000 differentially expressed genes in ECs and only 500 in the plastoc cells. But not only the number is higher, but also the expression levels are different. So on the right, you can see the expression levels in the plastoc cells in black and in the ECs in gray. In gray. And this is all compared to LGMC07 without docs, H9 and H9 plus docs. So the expression levels are much higher in ECs, and that together with the higher number of differentially expressed genes probably makes in the difference that the ECs are classified as, as distinct from normal pluripotent stem cells. So in summary, or as conclusion, the teratoma assay is able to detect functional pluripotency and differentiation deficiency. Importantly, it is also able to detect potential malignancy, but it has a number of drawbacks. As mentioned, animal dependency is time-consuming and expensive. It is non-quantitative. The teratoma score, it does detect differentiated teratomas and undifferentiated tumors, but it's unable to detect partially undifferentiated tumors. The scorecard confirmed basically our findings of the teratomas namely that it can detect functional pluripotency and differentiation deficiency, but it's much faster than the teratoma assay. It has a limited number of marker genes, though, which are used for analysis. And the pluritest gives you a quantitative readout of the pluripotency status, so the undifferentiated cells, but it does not tell you anything about functional pluripotency. So what we propose is that you would use fluid test in combination with the scorecard for characterization of IPS cells used for in vitro modeling. And if you want to go into the clinics, you, of course, need a lot of additional characterization, but then the teratomas could be of help in this case because you could detect uh, potential malignancy. So finally, I would like to acknowledge all the people involved in this project, especially Marcha Bauma and Daniela Salvatore. I also would like to thank our funding agency, which is the Netherlands Organization for Scientific Research. And as you can see, a lot of other people have contributed to this work, and for the sake of time, I cannot name them all. Please look for details in our published article in Stem Cell Reports earlier this year. And thank you very much for your attention.